Wow, are you guys in store for an amazing video today? In this video, I'm gonna be taking you from a Facebook ads beginner all the way to expert in this one single video. So make sure you pay attention closely. Let's jump right into it. So real quick, I just wanna go over why I'm making this video because it may sound like a situation you're in right now. So I'm making this video for the people that know nothing about Facebook ads except for that people are getting results with them and you just can't seem to figure out how to learn them. For those people that have watched YouTube videos for hours only to get zero results and those people that have made ads thought it was amazing and then it got zero results. Guys, I've already spent tens of thousands of dollars on Facebook ads and thousands of hours in the Facebook ads manager and I want to save you the time and the money of having to do this all on your own. So if you have tried and you haven't got results, I want you to know real quick, you, it's not your fault because I've been where you, you're at right now and the problem was you just learned from people who most likely didn't know the heck what, what the heck they were doing or you were watching old videos or they were using methods in their videos that they were showing that worked years ago but Facebook has changed completely and it's way more competitive now so that's what this video is going to be about so real quick what are you going to learn in this video so you're going to learn how to create Facebook ads that work for local businesses how to create Facebook ads that work for e-commerce how to create Facebook ads that work for info products and how to maximize ROI with retargeting lookalike audiences. I mean, I would assume most of you guys are in one of those three industries or the reason you're watching this video right now. But I wanna just show you real quickly and explain real quickly, because I know your time is valuable, how I'm gonna take you from a beginner to an expert in this one single video. I'm gonna go over all of this in this video today. I'm gonna to walk you through my exact marketing process to create an ad that works for your specific business. I'm gonna walk you through the ads manager and how to set up your ads correctly. I'm gonna teach you the essential Facebook ad terminology and special features of the Facebook ads manager. I'm gonna go over the most common mistakes and how to avoid them. This will literally save you thousands of dollars and I'm not even lying because I've made these mistakes and they've cost me thousands of dollars. Um, and how to read the data and tell how well your ad is performing. And lastly, and this is like a really big thing. So like whether you're a super beginner or maybe you're even already advanced, like this video is gonna be insane. I'm really excited for this because I spent a lot of time on this and this is probably one of the best videos you're gonna see in your entire life uh, or at least most valuable. But lastly, I'm gonna go over how to scale up and maximize your return on investment with split testing, look like audiences and retargeting. So let's jump right in. And if any of this sounds confusing, don't worry about it. Everything's gonna be explained A to Z in this video. But real quickly, I wanna show you some results compared to some of the other videos you might have watched on YouTube of these people that may not actually have results, they're just making a YouTube video how to do stuff. But uh, is this video worth your time? These are some of my results of people that have watched my YouTube videos. Um, as you can see, one of them got 30 people showed up for a, a free trial of a gym. Um, he got five leads from his chiropractor in five hours for like $15. Um, this one right here had 120 leads come in and 63 scheduled an appointment for his client that he was working with. Um, this is somebody that watched my YouTube videos and got a couple leads really quickly. This is another person that got eight leads from $95 for a real estate agent. So guys, like these are people that are actually getting results from watching my videos. So we're gonna make you one of those result stories if you just stick to the end of this video. Uh, here's some videos real quickly of me with one of my clients to show that like this is something I actually do on a daily basis, what I do is run Facebook ads for businesses and I run them for myself as well. So this is one of my clients that owns a gym and I just wanna show you this real quick, just to show that I'm actually Grant, what do you think about the results do what I'm talking about today. Yeah. How many room hey, it's been cool, man. Okay, so you guys, when we started this process, uh, Billy and I, um, we were about 80, 89, 78, 80 people. And <laughs> what's up, dude? Okay, we were at 89 and 90 people or whatever. And now we brought Billy on board, uh, Wilson Media. Uh, the man's been involved with the gym, loving what we're doing. He, he, we, we bolted on, put our heads together, and now we're at 150. So I've taken this gym. This is one of my clients that I've taken from 80 members to 150 in four weeks. But overall, I've taken them from 56 to over 250 at this point. That's just one of my clients' results. These are a couple more just so you guys have know how much I've spent on Facebook ads and what kind of results I've gotten with them so you guys feel confident that if you stick to the end of this, you're gonna be able to do, I mean, maybe not as good, but even if you can just get a quarter of these results, like that's gonna be great results for you. Um, this is one of my clients that is an influencer and got a five, 31 $500 sales for, it costed $7.14, so that's a 67 times ROI. Now, of course, these are retargeting ads, but that's one of the ads I'm gonna show you how to set up in this video, and you actually can 
do this if you have the audience already built up. You just might not even know it. Um, here's one from a local coffee shop, and I doubled their sales within a week's time just with the one advertisement that I ran for them. Here's a yoga studio that I worked with, and I brought them over 100 leads in one month for $3 each and ended up getting them eight new clients from that. So each of those clients is over, over the course of a year worth about $2,000 to them. Um, here's a real estate agent. So, I mean, even if you guys, even if your exact business type isn't shown here, this video is still going to apply to you. This is just a couple examples, but um, here's a real estate agent that I got $4 seller leads for, brought in 32 leads. And I mean, one sale is worth $5,000. I mean, if it's a seller and a, and a buyer, then you're going to get $10,000 just from one of these closing. Uh, and here's one of my clients ad accounts that has spent six, I mean, in, in US dollars, this is about $800,000, $900,000 in ad spend. Um, so as you guys can tell, I've, I've managed a lot of ad spend and I have a lot of experience doing this. So that's why I just want to show you that real quick so you know that you're learning from the right person. But I wanted to tell you real quickly how this video is going to be different from any of the other ones you ever watched. And the number one way is it's not just going to be focused on the technical stuff that anybody can teach you. I'm going to walk you through my exact marketing process to create an ad that works for your specific business. I even have a worksheet that I'm going to give you for free and you don't even have to put in your email. It's going to be in the link down below. I won't even make you put in your email for this. And um, you can just fill it out while you're watching this video. And lastly, one more reason this video is going to be different. We're going to be going over advanced Facebook marketing tactics that I've yet to see anyone else on the internet demonstrate. And that's not just like an overestimate or anything like that. You guys will notice and once you see me go over in the video, but I want to jump right in and I don't want to waste too much more of your time, but I just want to really quickly, we're going to jump into this in like one minute, but uh, I just want to let you know and make it as clear as possible because one of my goals as a YouTuber and a marketer is just to be the most honest online marketer out there that there is because there's very few honest marketers in, in the industry. So I just want to admit real quick, yes, I am making this video in order to profit from it, just like everybody else making free content online. But with that said, I'm not going to hold anything back from you. I'm still going to give you everything you need in this video. And I can almost guarantee this will be one of the most value backed videos you've seen in your entire life. So pay close attention. And like, you don't have to take notes because you obviously you can rewatch it, but it's still important that you pay close attention because I'm going to be going over some really advanced stuff here. Um, and lastly, the reason I'm making this video is I run a Facebook ads agency and I know a small percentage of the people watching this that end up watching this may just decide they'd rather have someone else do it for them. So that's how I end up to profit from this video if um, people do find it that valuable. So let's jump right into it. Here we go. We're getting started with it. And I want you to know a couple things before Facebook ads. And guys, if you're an expert, you're you kind of advanced, you're watching this video anyway, you might skip ahead slightly, but I still think this is so valuable for anyone to know. And you've already chosen to use Facebook ads, but we really need to dive into why specifically Facebook ads are we even, why are we even using Facebook ads? Number one, your audience is already on Facebook. Just about everybody's on Facebook and people are looking at it on a daily basis. Like less and less people are listening to the normal radio, less and less people are watching normal cable TV. Facebook is where people are at nowadays. And, and Facebook also includes Instagram, by the way, because Facebook owns Instagram, if you don't know that already. It's the best bang for your buck as far as the most reach per cost. Now you can work with some other advertising places that you can get a, a higher reach for the amount, but as far as the targeting features and stuff like that, we're going to get into later. It's going to be the best bang for your buck overall. Um, the targeting capabilities are insane. You can test. One thing is you can test for as little as $1 a day. So rather than in the past, you'd have to run a TV, let's say like a radio ad campaign for six weeks and it's going to cost you $6,000. So now most people don't have the ability to do that, but with Facebook ads, how, the way they've changed the game is just about anyone has access to be able to run ads nowadays because you can test for as little as $1 per day. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend testing for as, only $1 a day because that's really, it's going to take you a while to get results from that, but I usually recommend a minimum of $5 a day at the bare minimum, most, most likely $20 plus, $10, $20 plus, but it's up to you guys and we'll get into that. Um, and lastly, the retargeting, custom targeting features that I'm going to dive into. If you guys already know, if you went to a website and you start seeing ads on Facebook, that's what's going on there. So who can you target? You can target your email list demographics, your income range. You can literally plug in your email list, see, see what kind of people are on it, and then from there decide who to target. Um, you can target people that are making cer certain amount of income. Now this Facebook might remove this in the near future when I'm recording this video. Um, so I'm going to go over a way to overcome that here in a second, but you can target people likely to move, likely to purchase a certain type of car, employees of a certain company, 
Some of these, yeah, some of these may be removed, but there's still ways around it. For example, if I want to target high income ranges, I can figure out what stuff that people that make a lot of money are interested in. Maybe people that make a lot of money are interested in golf in the U.S. or something along those lines. Or if you're doing a local local business area, you can drop pins specifically on um, high income neighborhoods. That, it, that way, you know that people are making a lot of money. Um, lookalike audiences. 75% video viewers. So if somebody watches, you could even ta target people that have watched a certain percentage of one of your videos that you have on your Facebook page. You can plug in your email list and create an audience of people that are the most similar to the people that are already your customers. It's insane, guys. So I just wanted to go over that real quickly so you understand the capabilities and why you actually should be using Facebook in the first place because that's an important thing that you need to know from the start. But here's just an example of what the targeting looks like. Maybe you've already seen this before. Uh, maybe you haven't. But as you can see, like you can target the people that you can target employers, income, drop pins anywhere you want, target specific locations. It's insane. So what's our goal with this video? It's to automate your clientele growth, to automate your business growth. It's to remove stress of having enough sales and replacing your lead gen so you can focus on your clients. So I know this might be, and it's obviously to make you more money, but let's skip over that one. It's not too important, but here's how you get results with Facebook guys. Let me skip this over. This is my simple three-step step, three step strategy. On the first side, we're going to have a Facebook ad here. And in the Facebook ad, we're going to offer something of value for free or a reduced price. And I'll show you some real-life examples of this here in a second. And then we're going to lead them to a lead form or a landing page where we'll capture their name, email, and phone number. Now, this might be a little different. Like You might not necessarily capture their phone number. If you're doing an e-commerce site, you might send them to your sales page instead of your lead form. But this is just giving you an idea. Um, and then you're gonna, from there, you're going to lead them to a thank you page where you're going to deliver the goods and potentially upsell them. And this is where you, you've you captured the lead at this point. You can sell them. And this is where your money comes in. Simple as that. So what does this look like in real life? Here's an example from one of my gym clients. So as you can see, it's a Facebook ad. This is what a Facebook ad looks like. You guys have seen it. If you go into Facebook right now, you can see tons of Facebook ads. This one specifically is offering a free seven-day pass to the gym. This, they click on the ad. This is what shows up. It's a Facebook built-in lead form. I'm going to go over how to create these later in the video, but at the beginning here, we're going over the strategy and we're going to build out an ad for you. And then I'm going to show you how to create your ad. All right. So this is what it looks like. And Facebook, if you use the lead form um, objective, Facebook already has people's information. So I know it's not shown in this picture, but their information will be automatically inputted into here. And then all they have to do is press one button submit. And then I set up a system so that the lead gets automatically texted to the gym and all the gym has to do is call them up, book them in for a tour. And then once they come in for their tour and their seven day free pass, they put in their credit card. And then after seven days, their credit card gets charged if they don't decide they don't want to cancel. Simple as that. That's how they make the money. Um, thank you, Paige. And this is pretty much just upselling them slightly. It's telling them their pass is only valid for 48 hours. Please schedule a tour. And this one doesn't offer an upsell, but I'll show you an example of that later on. And this is what the text looks like if you want to decide to set this up. Obviously, if you're doing e-commerce, something like that, you don't want to set up text messages to do this. This is more of like a local business you would set up a, a text for. Or if you're getting leads for to make a sale and you're going to do a sales call, things like that. That's when you're going to want to do this, set this up, this kind of stuff up. But this is what it looks like if you decide to set that up. And before I jump into this, this is some of the most common mistakes I see. So if you're making one of these mistakes, you should definitely pay even more close attention to this video. Um, cause it's make, make, going to make a big difference for you. So one of the things is sending people directly to your website. I see this way too often boosting your Facebook posts. This is one of, this is a really big mistake because you're missing out on a lot of the features that Facebook provides you with. If you're just boosting them, boosting is made mostly for people that don't really understand exactly what they're doing. And Facebook just wants to make some extra money with it. Um, you can't directly track your return on investment. So if you can't tell exactly how much money you're making back from your Facebook ads, huge mistake. The next biggest mistake is having more than one thing people can do. You only want to give them one option of, or one call to action, a bad offer, bad grammar, uh, not putting yourself in the customer's shoes. It's one of the biggest ones by far that people don't even realize too confusing, not enough pain reward to take action. And you guys will see what this actually looks like in a sec. No clear advertising goal. So here's some examples of some bad Facebook ads that I had screenshots of that have been run in my local area. Um, this one just simply says, we're, and I, I'm showing you these because your Facebook ads might look like this. And I want to show you what bad Facebook ads look like and compare to what good Facebook ads look like. So you guys can really tell the difference and see what makes Facebook ads good versus bad. 
So this one is simple. We're hiring and training real estate agents apply now. Now, the problem with this, there's no pain behind this. There's no reward behind this. There's no salesmanship at all whatsoever behind this. If you really wanted to sell this, you probably want to make a video or even in the text explain how becoming a real estate agent is going to change your life or how what kind of problems you're facing right now in your life compared to how that could solve them and building a lot more pain and reward um, for this. Now the apply now button is, is good. That's a good part of it. But the picture and the other stuff here isn't that good. So this one is a dent repair. If anyone you know has received, received hail damage on your vehicle, please contact us. We offer deductible assistance up to, now this isn't necessarily bad. As you can see, it has a lot of stuff. And so I know they've spent a lot of, spent a lot of money on this. And the pictures are good. This is actually good pictures, but you don't want to say, if you know anyone, please contact us. Facebook has a lot better features than this. And this is just like a normal boosted post. You wouldn't want to just say, please contact us. You should have a button or a way to gather. Uh, if you like, if you've received hail damage on your vehicle, please contact us. Like instead of that, I would say we offer a deductible assistance up to $500. I would put like an apply now button or even at least a contact us button where they can just quickly call it's literally anything, but I would better than anything, implement a lead generation system. So they can call people up when they get these, because you're going to lose so many leads of people that are just too lazy to contact you rather than they can just press a button, put in their information and they contact them. So running low on a hot water tank, but a tankless won't work well for you. No worries. Just another solution can be to add another tank. Like there's just no, there's no call to action here. Um, there's no offer, there's nothing, but people are still spending money on ads like this and it makes, it kind of breaks my heart. Um, but you guys will see what a successful one looks like here in a sec. So this is more of what a good, what a good ad looks like. Um, it's, uh, in this, for this example, it is a listing of a home and we are offering a, well, this isn't my ad specifically. So, um, it's simply the offer is to get a full report on this home. So like an e-brochure. And all they have to click is one button. They put in their name, phone number, email, and they get that e-brochure. So obviously, if somebody puts their and puts in their information to get info on this, they are more than likely a buyer or a person looking to buy a home. Now that real estate agent can call those leads up and um, follow up with them, and you can directly track how much you've money you've made from that. Or when you get a sale, you can track the lead back to your Facebook ad. So real quickly, I'm going to go over the value ladder and then we're going to jump in and start creating your ad. Um, but I want to go over the value ladder real quickly so you guys understand where, like how exactly this is supposed to work. So really what we're trying to do with our ads is bring people in the door. We're trying to offer a bait. So if you guys don't know what bait means, bait is pretty much the offer that we're giving them in the advertisement. We're going to get them in the door with the bait and we're going to offer them and work them up our value ladder. So for example, what this might look like for a chiropractor is let's say in our Facebook ad, we offer a $10 adjustment exam and consultation. We lose a little bit of money on that. But what we gain is once they come back, we gain them their money with regular adjustments. We gain their money with acupuncture. But the reason for having this low cost offer is to get more people through the door. Now, I know some of you guys might be shaking your head and saying like, I don't want to discount my services. You don't have to. There's lots of other options. But the goal of this is to get more people in the door because what the competition might be doing, they're just trying to start people off right here. And so you're going to get more people in the door than your competition by experiencing your product at first and having a low barrier to entry. And because you have more people getting in your door, you're going to therefore get more customers than your competition. So that's the value ladder quickly explained. But let's jump into my marketing process so you, so you guys can start creating an ad that's going to work for you. So my marketing process goes like this. First off, I, I figure out who the ideal customer is, what their wants are, what their needs are, and what their pains are. Then I create an offer that appeals to that ideal customer. Then after that, I create an ad that captures the customer's attention and hits home with them, possibly telling a story in the process. Then from there, I create the funnel that is going to drive their action. So I'm going to be able to get their lead information or sell them whatever their action is next. And lastly, of course, we're going to make the sale. And you might want to follow up with the lead, but I'm going to show you a lot of different ways to follow up with the lead later on in this video. So number one, we're going to figure out our ideal customer. So I want you to ask yourself, what is the avatar of your ideal customer? And right now, guys, I'm actually going to pull up a separate sheet on my screen here. And this is the thing that I'm going to put um, 
in the description below so you can fill out while I'm doing this. So you can take a second there and download this on your computer, put it on another screen or put it on your phone. You can start writing this out as I'm going through this video or you can do it, you can pause the video and you can write it in and then replay it so that you can hear every part, whatever you need to do. But I have the sheet that I'm gonna fill out and I'll fill one out, I'll put, I had an example one that I filled out already and I'll walk you through this one after I go through all of these steps. So qu real quickly, we'll get back into the presentation and figure out who our ideal customer is. So you're gonna ask yourself, how much do they make? How old are they? What are they interested? What do they do? What causes them pain? Go through your Facebook targeting options, see what options fit them. So what I mean by that, you're gonna go through the Facebook targeting, you're gonna open up face, you're gonna go to Google, you're gonna go to search Facebook ads, ads manager and click on whatever the correct one is. And you're either gonna create, account, create an account or you already have one, go to the ads manager. And then from there, you're gonna pick your account. And you know, let's actually, I'm gonna go into one of my accounts that's already open here. But you're gonna to get to a page like this and it probably won't have ads already in here unless you've ran some in the past. But um, after that, you're going to go and create an ad and we're gonna check out the audience. And so you can figure out some features in here and I recommend everybody do this for their business. Um, once you get to this, point in the process go in here where it says detail targeting and you're gonna start browsing you're gonna go through every single one of these every single one and figure out what what things might fit your demographic and write them down um, because it'll be a lot easier to save them for later and then once you get something then you're gonna press the suggestions button let's say for example we're, we're doing kind of like a gym and I'm gonna use a gym as, as our example mm, because it's just something that everyone can understand so Let's say we want people that are interested in physical fitness. Now we press suggestions and all of these other ideas come up. And you can write as many of these as you want down, any ones that fit. Um, and there's just so much targeting as you guys can see. You just need to take the time and walk through this yourself because I can't walk you through, I can't possibly walk you through every single one and every single type of business. So you guys have to kind of do that part on your own. And then from there, so what's it gonna look like when we fill this sheet out? All right, so we have our ideal customer avatar What's their age? We're gonna fill that out, pretty simple. You should, and, you, and when you're making this, you wanna think about who's your ideal customer. Just because you have one customer that's 65, that's not your most common customer. You wanna think about who's your most common customer and who's your best customer. So just because you have one 65 doesn't mean you have to put your age range from 18 to 65. You wanna keep it, your age range as small as possible. That's gonna be your best range. So you're gonna figure out what are they interested in. In this particular, we're gonna pretend this is a gym that um, people that are gym enthusiasts are going to want to go to people that already work out are going to go to this place. It's not necessarily, yeah, there's some people that are brand new to the gym that go here, but the, the ideal audience is people that already work out because we don't have to sell them on coming in and, and working out. How much do they make? At least $30,000. So that's pretty low barrier of entry. Some people might be making a hundred thousand dollars plus might, some might be $500,000 plus it depends, but you need to know this about your customers before you get into this. What are their behaviors? Um, they already go to the gym. They already have memberships. These are just some examples of what I'm what I would fill out for this particular um, feature. So with the Facebook targeting, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna write down all the ones that we think fit. Um, only choose the best ones. Only choose the best options. And we're gonna get into some more details on how to use this later on. But we're just gonna talk about real quick um, how to create your ideal customer. So the next step in this is creating the, your offer. So next we're going to create an offer for our Facebook ad. Now we're going to think about what would our ideal customer want. So here's some examples of good offers just to give you ideas to brainstorm. You can research on your own, but here's some really good offers just to break, give you guys as many ideas as possible. So think about what your best ever promotion was and think about what your offer was there. That's an example of an offer you might use a free ebook, a 20 second test, free shipping, free session, giveaways, free webinars, training videos, free eBooks. I already put free eBooks twice, but who, who cares? Um, extreme low price discount, a free quote, a calculator, free calculator. See if you qualify for XXX. Take our 20 second test to see if you qualify. Research on Google and Groupon. Um, comment your business. So guys, you, if you want to, and you still can't think of an offer after all these different things, where you can even comment which offer you think would work and you can get some feedback from me and other people, um, whether your offer is going to be good or not, and we'll help you come up with an offer. So if you comment your business and you say that you're looking to come up with a good offer, just comment that down below and you're gonna have to put some background information if you're in a difficult business to understand what that might be, but hopefully somebody can give you some ideas. So 
next we are going to create the ad and start writing out what the ad says. Now we're not gonna create any ads manager yet. I actually write it out on my own and think about what I'm gonna put here first as the creative um, before I actually start putting this all together. That's why I'm walking you guys through the process of what it's actually like doing this. So here's what you should do for the creative. Um, there's a couple different options. Now the main ones that I use are video. And if you use video, it needs to be engaging and or providing value to whoever's watching. Um, so for an example, I'm gonna show you an example of one of my friends real quickly of a very good video ad and a very engaging. Now you guys have to think about this and consider this when you're running Facebook ads. You have to, somebody scrolling down Facebook, they're not necessarily, they're not really trying to look for an ad. They have to choose whether or not they're gonna look at your ad or pay attention to it or not. So you need to think about, that's like a really big barrier of entry for someone that's gonna get distracted and actually stop on your ad. So you don't wanna make your ad adsy and salesy and all this stuff, but people are not even gonna watch it. You have to make it engaging. Now see this example to show you what I mean. This is from um, one of my friends, Brandon Brecker. If you guys wanna check out his YouTube channel, you can as well, just search him up in the search bar. But this is one of his videos for one of his clients and, it, and it's an extremely well put together video. So that's why I wanna show you that as an example. So there you go. As you guys can see, that ad is extremely engaging. You see this from the very beginning. You're gonna, so you're gonna pause and you're gonna watch this. This is an exa the exact kind of layout. Now you guys obviously don't have to have your video the exact same, but this is just a really good example to get your ideas flowing and getting you to kind of realize what what type of videos work well on Facebook. And, and like, it doesn't have to be necessarily this style of video. There's lots of different things you can do, but it mainly just needs to be engaging and something people actually want to watch and people find valuable and enjoyable to watch or people aren't even going to watch it. So let's jump back into the presentation. So another one that I do is sometimes slideshow. Now the benefit of this is obviously easier and faster to create. So I usually use, if I do a slideshow and Facebook actually, actually lets you put in pictures and create a slideshow within Facebook so you don't have to make this on your own. Um, you get a couple of eye-catching photos with text. Now, I usually add text on the photos because people, when they see text on a photo, they're more likely to read it, pay attention to it. And I usually tell like a short story with like five different slides and I might tell, put a little piece of text on each slide that tells a short story um, that people are gonna pay attention to and they're gonna like relate to it in some way. So I usually make these slideshow photos in Canva and I usually make them like squares with text over the top with images that you can get. So canva.com is the, is the website. You can create some images with text over them. And um, it's a very easy website to use. And the way it, the place I get pictures, now one thing to consider if you're using images or pictures at all, don't use pictures that look stock. As soon as people see stock on Facebook, they're, they're scrolling away because they see ad, they see scam. So if you decide to use pictures that are on the internet, you need to make ones that do not look stock, but more than anything, I recommend getting custom pictures for your slideshows and everything like that made for your specific business. And uh, that kind of goes hands in hand with the images, so do not use stock looking photos. They need to be attention grabbing, and they need to, like if you decide to use it only an image, your ad copy needs to be very strong because um, obviously people are gonna focus more on the ad copy if you're using an image compared to a video, people are just gonna watch the video. Uh, and the video is gonna do most of the explaining. So that's one thing you have to consider. And a place you can get um, some good photos is pexels.com and unsplash.com. That's a place you can get free, um, high quality photos. But like I said, keep in mind, if you decide to use something like that, make sure you go with photos that do not look stock and they're really attention grabbing. So how do you write 
what goes in the Facebook ad. So first off, I want to I want to just let you guys know first off what is copywriting in case you hear about me mentioning it. So copywriting is the act of writing text for the purpose of advertising or other forms of marketing. So it's also you could basically just call it persuasive writing. So let me show you guys an outline of that I usually use for writing my ads. So first off, I start with my ads off always with some kind of hook. I usually call out whoever I am targeting. So in this case, I'm targeting people that own homes. So I literally say Hey, Olathe homeowners, if you're a homeowner in Olathe, don't you think you're going to pay attention to this right away? It's pretty simple. Uh, are you looking to sell your home but not sure how you can get the quickest bang for your buck? So you're immediately qualifying, are you looking to sell your home? So we're immediately qualifying. So if somebody's looking to sell their home at this point, they're going to read all the way through. They're pretty much hooked in at this point. Next, we're going to hit their pain points. So not sure how you can get the quickest bang for your buck. I know Many of you struggle with having the time and capital but to do large home improvement projects. Now, this isn't the best pain point. I'll show you another pain point here in a second. I'm going to show you one more example of this. Um, then we pretty much provide a solution. So we, this week together, we put together seven tips you can use to basically solve this problem. I have that blanked out because this is a special ad that I, I sell, but um, that I sell separately. But I'll show you another example of this. Um, and so the offer is also the solution in this case. And then lastly, we have a call to action. Now this part, I just kind of told a story a little bit to get them more familiar with the agent that's offering this download. So the, of course, the, the last thing is a call to action. I say click the download button below to get your free PDF emailed to you today. They click the download button below and they get their advertisement. They have to put in their name, phone number, email. And now we get that lead and now we have the lead of a seller. And we can pretty much call them up on the phone and be like, hey, I saw you got my guide. I, I was wondering, and I want you to know I'm not trying to sell you at all on this call. I was I just wanted to walk you through it and help personally help you out. I have a script for this, but personally help you out if um, in any questions you might have about selling your home or something along those lines. I, I like I said I have a script for it, but I'm just going off the cuff here. So here's an example, another example of an advertisement that goes the same process. So did you know the number one obstacle stopping single mothers trying to buy a home at Montgomery is their credit score? And I need to get this ad, this, give this ad credit to Billy Jean as marketing. So this is his ad. Just so you guys know, if you guys know who that is, but that's the, just the credit for that. Um, but zero, I put zero target audience because our target audience here is obviously single mothers in Montgomery. We're calling them out. Once again, there's the hook, number one. So number two, we're hitting their pain points. Here's some of the most common reasons they may have poor credit score. They're going to relate to these pain points. Bankruptcy or foreclosure, medical bills, incorrect reporting or fraud, raising a family can't keep up with bills. Unfortunately, for those who are removed off a credit report, this can take up to, if not longer than a decade. In other words, they are likely not eligible to purchase or even rent a home in Montgomery, Alabama for at least 10 years. So there's the pain. Then here's the solution. It's not fair. It's not right. But I think I can help. I am William and I specialize in helping hundreds of single mothers on Montgomery purchase a home even if they have challenged credit. If you'd like me to personally, now here's the solution and the offer. If you'd like me to personally review your credit and tell you exactly what you need to do to get your negatives removed, then click below to schedule a free credit repair strategy call. That's the offer. Call to action. Click below to schedule a free credit repair strategy call. You guys will notice he's not calling this a free consultation. He's not saying at the very beginning, this is a mistake I see so many people make. He's going to write, they're going to write here, do you have a bad credit score? Click below for a free consultation. Like that's not going to work. You guys can see how much different this is than just saying something like that and why this would be more effective. Now, simply, this is just a video here he had of him on the news. Um, and lastly, that's, that's nice to have is urgency is some type of urgency if you can add that on as well. So that's how you do it. All right. So here's the goals of your writing when you're doing this. So let me jump back into the sheet as far as we'll walk back into the sheet that we created that we're going through. I'm going to exit out of this and we're going to go back into the offer. I'm going to jump back into this. I'm going to jump back to the presentation again. So with the offer, what's the best promotion you've ever ran? So you haven't done any yet in this case, or you write whatever your promotion is. So I wrote down a couple examples. You have all the examples here and I chose a couple ones that would be good for a gym that might be good for a gym. Um, let's give people a free pass to come in our gym, try it for free. Let's uh, give them a free body composition because people that are into fitness, they might want to know what their body fat percentage is now so they can test it later. People that are into fitness, they might like some free supplements. Maybe I can get them to the door with that. Those are just a couple examples, quick ideas that I came up with. 
So then from there, we create our ad. So with our ad copy, what makes our diff your business different or better? And this is something you can talk about. So obviously, one thing that makes his different business different, I mean, there's not that's not really talked about in the ad, but this still helps you in creating that. Um, what's the biggest problems you solve for the customers? This is the part that's really big. And obviously, this one was talked about in those two, both of those ads that we talked about. They don't like their, in this case, we're talking about the gym. Um, they don't, you don't like the ad, the gym they're currently at. It's a crowded gym, no family atmosphere. So that's something, the problems that people might be having at the other gyms that they're currently at. So let's jump back into the presentation. So here's how you write killer Facebook ads. So these should be the goals of your writing. Now we need to know the goals in order to create something that's going to get us to our goals, of course. So our goal is to get the customer to take action and you need to put yourself in the shoes of the customer. This is something I see people trying to make Facebook ads way too often. So if you were to, if for example, I told you the example earlier of a bad ad, if you were to put your shoes of somebody that's scrolling down Facebook, ask yourself, honestly, are you, am I going to stop and pay attention to this? Or am I going to scroll past this? Is this genuinely going to, going to make me go through the hassle? Like, is this worth my time? Have I been provided enough value to go through the hassle of putting in my information, getting contacted by somebody and being sold to? That's how powerful your ads need to be. So you really need to put yourself in the shoes of what their customer is going through when they see your ad. Um, have people read all the way through. So obviously that's important when you're making your ads. So you need to hook people in to get them to read all the way through. You need to ev evoke their emotion or tell a story. Um, so basically you want to make something that relates to the person you're targeting and when you came up with that ideal client and it needs to be easy to read and simple to understand. So it needs to be so simple to understand that a fifth grader can understand it because people are going to read fast and if it's just too confusing, people are going to give up on it. So that's why I say your ad, there needs to be almost zero confusion and the fifth grader needs to be able to understand your ad and what is it, what exactly is going on. Here are the most common mistakes I see with people that try to write with their Facebook ad copy. Grammar mistakes, not clear and quickly understandable, overly wordy and not easy to read. Um, if you, to fix these, if you're not necessarily good at writing, the only thing I can really recommend is either have someone else write it for you or write it yourself and have someone to review it that's good at grammar or good at writing, um, etc. Have somebody like that review your ad before you actually put it out and then you can edit it to fit their needs. So here's my mini, some mini tips that I have for you when you're writing Facebook ad is use emojis. Now, not over excessively. I wouldn't really recommend that. Use it to whatever kind of business you're in. Obviously, if you're in a really professional business, you're going to want to keep those to a minimum, but they are helpful in the fact that they grab your attention and they give you a picture within the, within the, um, within the caption. Um, it's just a more attention grabbing and people are going to pay more attention and it gives them more emotion. Um, space out your writing. So we're no longer in the days of five sentence paragraphs. We're in the days of one sentence paragraphs. So space out your writing so it's easier to read. Um, keep your call to action above the fold. Now, what I mean by that, I'll show you in a second. So let me actually pull something up. Keep your call to action above the fold. What I mean by the fold is when you see a Facebook ad, now it's not showing in these, but you, if you go into Facebook right now, you're going to see that there's a see more button or a continue reading button here um, after a certain point, and they won't see this entire text. So preferably, you don't have to do this 100%, but preferably you want to have your call to action before they press that continue reading. So if they don't press continue reading, they still know what to do um, with your ad. And I'll show you an example of that maybe. I'll show you some later. Let's see if this one has it. Yeah, so this one has it. So obviously there's a call to action here and there's a call to action at the end. That's why I put it twice if you guys didn't catch that. So that's why I put above the fold as well. That's not 100% necessary, but it's just something that can help as well if you can make it work. So here's my top persuasion tactics when writing Facebook ads. Using scarcity, involving scarcity is a big one. So only X spots left today only. Asking agreeable yes questions that people are going to agree with. Answering possible objections people are going to have to doing this. Logical reasoning. Sexy wording. So what I mean by that is like, for example, like I said earlier, instead of calling it a consultation, we're calling a free strategy session to improve your credit. So free consultation versus, for example, see if you qualify for a new customer program. Like that just sounds way more sexy and appealing than free consultation. Nobody wants to sit down for an hour and go through a free consultation. It just sounds so boring. You just need to be creative as far as the wording you go. So guys, this is an example of copywriting. Now, I'm not going to read all the way through this. You can take your time, pause the video right here if you want to read through this, but I'm not going to go through this, but this is one of the most difficult things I have to write copy for. 
it's convincing farmers to put in their lead information. And I don't think anybody could anything could be more difficult than getting farmers to put in their lead, lead information, but I made it work. So if you guys want to see some good examples of ad copy, <laughs> there it is right here on the screen. So you pause it right now, read through this, and uh, get some ideas from this as far as copywriting. Um, so last, the next step for funnel, we're going to create a funnel that drives customer action. So we're going to jump back into our sheet here and fill this out more. So we're into our ad creative section. So we didn't go into this yet, but um, so what are we going to use for our video? So do you already have some great video images, videos you can use? If not, you can make a new one, just write out a plan for it. Um, obviously you want to plan your video out, record your video. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can record it on a phone and get it edited by somebody you know or somebody on Fiverr. Do whatever you need to do. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, but more than anything, it needs to tell a story. It needs to be painful. It needs to be rewarding. It need, needs to be engaging, something that people are actually going to want to watch, something that provides value to people, just like the video as the example I showed you. So let's say you have a video already. Maybe you have a motivational video. So for this example, I just said, yes, I have dope videos showing what it's like to work out here and what makes us different and what the interior looks like. So we can use that as the video. So what are your, some of your best ever posts? Let's say you have this controversial post about a keto diet. This just might give you some ideas as what to put for the image or the, the copy or the, the video, what to make a video about. Because if you have a post that did really well, you can just redo that for an ad and add an offer to it, something along those lines, just giving you ideas. So next we're getting into the funnel. And I'm gonna ask you, where you're gonna ask yourself, what is something we can add to the current offer? on a thank you page to get them to take action now. So for example, I'm gonna come back to this in a second because you may not understand exactly what that means, but here are some ways that you're gonna create a funnel. And this is the part that people are gonna, you're gonna collect their lead information or that's gonna drive their action. So what is a funnel? It's something that people are gonna go into. I'm gonna show you a real life example of what this looks like in a second. So ClickFunnels is a, a software where you basically build landing pages. Um, that's one thing that I use for funnels. I use, actually use all of these for funnels, but, um, you might just pick one at first. Usually for most beginners, I'd recommend a lead form, but it really depends on what industry you're in. Obviously, if you're in e-com, you don't want people's, you don't really want people's phone numbers and emails that badly. You want people to just buy your product. So it's going to be a little different, but just take it into whatever category you're in. So you need to figure out which of these four or other options are going to be best for you. Um, and the really difference is ClickFunnels is a landing page. Lead forms are built within Facebook. So the benefit is Facebook already has people's info, so all they have to press is one button. But the downside to a lead form is it's harder to upsell people because it's all built within Facebook. You can only go so far and you can't like, for example, you can't make like an application in lead forms and there's things that you can't do in lead forms that you can do in click funnels. Um, it'd be take me a long time to explain all the limitations, but that's just one example. You can send them to a scheduler to schedule an appointment with you um or send them to a sales page if you're doing e-commerce store so then from there you're going to figure out what's best for you you might do a little bit more research but these are pretty simple things that you can really find out easily that's why i'm not going to go over this video because i want to save you as much time as possible um in case you already understand and know which one you already plan on using but later in this video i'm going to show you how to create a lead form so my most important tips with your funnel is if you use a landing page a sales page or click funnel you need to make sure it's optimized for mobile because that's where a majority of your customers are probably actually going to come from, surprisingly. And the simpler is the simple is better always. You want to have as little call to actions as possible. Only one thing they can do. Um, and simple is just better because people don't get confused. It's the same thing with your advertisements. People just don't get confused. They don't get distracted and they don't click away. Um, it needs, needs to add, match the ad as much as possible. So for example, if you're saying your ad, get a free seven day pass, your landing page should say, get a free seven day pass. Like it needs to stay the same things and look the same so that people don't click on your ad and then see something completely different, completely different colors. And they're like, what the heck is this? And they click away because they think it's some kind of spam site. It needs to match as much as possible so that people understand where they're going next. So this is an example of what a landing page might look like um, for a gym getting a free Sunday pass. Now, obviously this can look the same for anyone. Put a simple photo, like see how simple this is guys. Um, it has your headline and I just click the button and it pops up something like this. Now I'm gonna put a, if you guys decide to use ClickFunnels to create landing pages like this, I'm gonna put a template um, for something similar to this down in the description below. You can click on that and you're going to be able to download my template. You can just replace the photos, replace the headline, stuff like that. 
and it'll give you a template similar similar to this. This is that this is mainly for local businesses, by the way. Then they, when they click on this button, they're gonna get put to a page like this, and it pops up, and they put in their name, phone number, email. They su they submit, and from there it takes them to a thank you page, where 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 in this case they're offering a if you schedule a tour right now, you call now, and the, their number is blocked out here, but you also release receive a free personal training session. So this is getting them to take action now. We're putting this as limited time. So they are basically forced to come in now or they're not going to be able to take advantage of it because we, we don't want people to forget about our offer. So this is what it looks like to upsell. Um, the reason we do this is because usually for one per one offer, we can usually get one action. So it's a little bit difficult to use the same offer to get people to book. Now you can say there's limited spots available. I can only take on these many people. So if you book now, you're going to be put the first in line and be locked in to be able to 100% get a tour. If not, they can't guarantee that. Obviously, if you don't have anything else to offer, but preferably you want to offer something else to get them to book because for each action, you usually want to add an additional incentive if, if, if at all possible. Um, that's why in this case, we're offering a schedule, a tour, uh, a free personal training session if they schedule a tour now. So the last and final step, and obviously the best step, is the sale. So we need to follow up and close a lead at this point. Lots of ways to do this. Depends on what niche you're in and what industry you're in, of course. But phone calls, text messages, email, messenger bots, retargeting ads. You can use all of these to close the lead, obviously, or just the sales page. Simple as that. So the sales part. All right, so if your leads don't turn into sales, these are the main things you need to fix. Now, if you're getting leads and phone numbers sent to your phone, you're a local business, something along those lines, your leads should be called instantly. You need to set up a system. So there's a website called zapier.com and you link that to your Facebook ads manager. I might have another video on this somewhere on my YouTube, but you go to zapier.com, you do Facebook ads to SMS and you can get your leads instantly texted to your phone. This costs a little bit of money, but not that much, but I think like $20 a month. And when you do that, you're gonna call up these leads immediately, get them scheduled for a tour, an appointment, whatever you decided to offer. Um, you're gonna implement automatic texting to yourself. Leads must be called. You can also implement automatic texting to um, people that become leads. Now this is a little bit more complicated. I'm not gonna cover this in this video because it's just too much to cover. Um, but you can do a little bit of research. You can do automatic texting through Zapier as well. I use click send actually for automatic texting to the lead. Leads should be called. They don't have to be called. And like, obviously this is for more for local businesses and there, you probably do want to create some sales scripts or, or training if you are giving other people these options or you want to write a sales script for yourself. And you also want to implement a tracking system so you can tell where each lead is in the process because these leads are valuable guys. Every single lead, one of these leads is money. And you're spending money to gain these leads. So you want to take advantage of them, of them as much as possible. You don't want to just be like, oh, I got a lead. Now I don't have to sell them anything. I don't have to call them up to schedule an appointment. No, you still need to follow up and get them in um, to turn them into money. So the sales process doesn't just end when you get a lead. You still need to follow up and get them in the door to turn them into a sale. So I wanted to read this real quick because this was a great post I saw on Facebook yeah, I'm going to read this through to you because you're going to understand more about Facebook ads just by reading this real quickly. If you want to skip this part, you can go ahead and just double tap on the right side. But uh, I would recommend like this is really powerful stuff. So here's the post that he made. I'll just read it for you guys. I've been studying for Facebook ads for about 10 years now. I know how frustrating it can be to see that all the results of everyone else is having all around you, but not being able to crack the code for yourself. There's one single tip that can make a huge difference in all of your real estate campaigns. Now, this applies for every business, but I'll tell you what it is in just one second, but first you need to know that there are two different types of marketing. One, intent, two, interruption. Intent-based marketing is when somebody is actively looking for a solution, like doing a Google search. Interruption marketing is like a billboard or magazine ad. It's an ad that interrupts somebody's activity. So Facebook is interrupting interruption marketing. People get on Facebook to escape and connect with their friends and family and not to be sold. Facebook is a whole different level of interruption marketing. Here's one single tip I was I mentioned a second ago. You have to view Facebook as the online party. This may not make sense, so let me explain. Imagine you're at a party with your friends and a family and all of a sudden this guy you've never met walks up and says, are you looking to buy or sell a home? My name is Bill and I've been a realtor for 22 years and I'd love to help you. How would you react to Billy? I would accidentally push him into the pool or at least do whatever I had to to get him away from him as quickly as possible and avoid Bill for the rest of the night. That's exactly what most realtors do with their Facebook ads. Now, this applies to every niche, like I said, once again. 
Now picture this scenario. You're at the same party and you start talking to this guy named Jack and it casually comes up that you're thinking about selling your home, but you don't even know what houses in the area are selling for. Jack mentions that he's a realtor and has a report on all the homes that sold in the last 90 days and he'd be happy to email it to you if you're interested. You say thanks and give him your email and you go on with your conversation just chatting. No pressure, no offering to be a realtor, just giving value. See the difference? Now imagine the next day you're scrolling through Facebook and you notice Jack's post about how to sell money or how to sell your home for more money. You, you go and you read it. He didn't even make you leave your email address. A few days later, you're on the phone with uh, Killing Time looking at Facebook again. You see a pic of Jack next to a home that sold in seven days for over the asking price in your area and notice that it says you would like to know if this is possible. If you would like to know if this is possible for your home, just click the button and send Jack a Facebook message. If you're already thinking about selling your home and you've gotten to know Jack a little bit by researching over the last week and so he's gent gently proven that he isn't pushy but is a highly professional and competent realtor, would you be more likely to push that button and send Jack a message? That's the game on Facebook. If you build campaigns like this, you'll begin seeing results really quickly. Hope this helps you. So guys, it's all about the value that you're giving people with your Facebook ads. That's what's gonna make the difference. Now, the other difference too is if you're a local business and really any business, retargeting ads is key because not everybody's going to buy them the first time, but if they see you seven times on Facebook, seven days of the week with different advertisements every time and different value pieces, pieces of value every time, it's going to be insane. People are going to build insane rapport with you automatically. And you're going to know how to set up retargeting ads by the end of this video. So don't worry about that part. But here's your first Facebook ad checklist. And right now after this, since we've went through everything, we are going to, and actually before I jump into the checklist, I'm going to jump back into here and fill out the rest of this information with you. So we decided, we came up with our offer here. So we decided on our offer is going to be a free pass, a free Sunday pass. And what we're going to upsell is on the thank you page, if they come in now, if you schedule an appointment right now with the button below or you call now, right? If you call now, we'll also throw in a free body competition for you so you can see how much body fat you have now and compare that to what it was, to what it will be five months from now or something along those lines. Because that's something that, an additional thing, somebody that's into fitness might be interested in knowing. Um, so just to go even further, we're on the last step, sale. How do you, so this is the last kind of things you wanna fill out to figure out what kind of return and how much you're willing to pay for your leads because this is an important process to know and understand. So first off, how do you typically get new customers? A lot of businesses are gonna be referrals, so I just put referral for this example. Um, what percentage of the people usually become customers? Let's say you get a referral, they, somebody's like, hey, my friend, blah, 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 is doing this, you should talk to him. Let's say one out of those five people become customers. Now, it should be higher than that, but we're just using this for example, so don't pay attention to that too much. And then next, we're gonna figure out what's the long-term value of your customer? Why does this matter? Because then we know how much we should be willing to spend to obtain this customer. So how do we figure out the long-term value? So we times, we multiply how long they stay on average times how much per month on average they're worth times the number of referrals that they give on average plus one. So on average, if somebody gives one referral and on average people stay for 12 months at your gym and it's a $50 per month membership and you might even add like personal training or stuff like that onto here in this, in this part. But if we multiply this all together, we get $1,200. So on average, every single customer to us is worth $1,200. So that's a pretty significant number. So then from there, we can figure out, well, how many leads are we gonna need per sale? If our closing rate is 20%, we're gonna need five to 10 leads per sale, probably closer to five, about five. So I wanna pay 10 to $20 per lead to obtain those. Now you can even get them a little bit lower. This is just a, a little bit behind the higher range. I've gotten leads for as little as $3, sometimes seven, $10 for this specific niche, but this is just examples. I wanna put it higher for you because you may not have as much experience. So from there, you're gonna figure out if your customer worth is $1,200, let's let's just say you wanna, you wanna figure out how much you're willing to pay maximum to gain one new customer. Let's say for maximum, you're willing to pay $100 to gain $1,200 back. That's a pretty good investment, right? If you're investing in the stock market, that's gonna be a good investment. But you would prefer to pay $50 to obtain each new client because what that means is basically you're gonna make your money back instantly in the first month since they're paying $50 per month. So you prefer to make your money back the first month and then every month after that that they stay is basically free money to you. So basically from there, we figure out what our profit potential will be. So if we pay $20 per lead and close one fifth of them, we can spend $1,000 and get 50 leads. That would mean 10 new members. So in this scenario, 
over the next 12 months, if we spent $1,000 to get these 50 leads, we turned $1,000 into $12,000. And you can do a lot better than this. You could probably get this to $10. You could do a higher close rate. There's lots of ways you can change this around. But um, even in this, like this is probably one of the worst case scenarios, but you guys need to work this out for yourself to figure out how much you're willing to spend. Because if you don't even know how much you're willing to spend to gain a client, don't know, even know what your goal is. You don't know what you're shooting for. That's why you need to work this out. And this is a huge mistake I see so many people make. They never even figure this stuff out. So they're just spending money and they don't even know if they're going to make it back. But if you work it out like this, you know exactly how much you should be willing to pay. And then from there, if you're getting, if you're paying $50 per lead, then you know you're obviously not doing bad because people ask me all the time, Billy, how much should I be paying per lead? This is, if you're asking that yourself that question, you should, you need to be filling this out and working out how much you should be willing to pay per lead for yourself. And then after that, you can figure out hey, how can I lower my cost per lead to get my profits even higher? So that's how you guys should work it out. So that is goes that goes through this entire sheet. So I'm gonna exit out of this, but if you guys wanna get that below and fill that out for yourself if you haven't already, click the link in the description, download it for completely free. All right, so let's close all of this and jump into the next section. So here's just a quick checklist that I go through when I make an ad for the first time. Um, pretty simple, pretty basic, but figure out your bait, your offer, create an ad funnel and test it. And then these are gonna come later on. I'm gonna talk about these later, but reset up retargeting ads after you get this to work. And lastly, refine and optimize. And guys, these are the these are the parts that I'm about to go here over here in a second. These are the more of the advanced tactics. So how do you get Facebook ad success? Now, I've pretty much showed you how to do all this. Now, of course, you can get some personal mentorship help that's gonna make it go faster for you. But the biggest thing overall is just testing, testing, testing. This is just by practicing is how you're gonna get better and by looking at the data is how you're gonna get better. So I'm gonna tell you how to read the data and all this other stuff. So this video is not over yet, but um, that's kind of like the first half of the video. Let's jump, let's keep going through this. Now I wouldn't say first half, but we got a little bit more left to go. So Facebook ad terminology you need to understand to just be effective. So offer, lead magnet, bait, etc. I've already talked about these a little bit. These are what you're offering in your ad. I kind of went over that already. Retargeting is showing an ad specifically to someone who has previously interacted with your business. Let's say you already have their email, they've already went to your website, they've already liked one of your Facebook posts. You can retarget all of these different types of people. Facebook Pixel, that is a piece of code you put on your website to track visitors. This allows you to retarget them. So this is how you're able to retarget people that visited your website. And it's a piece of code that you just copy and paste. It's not as complicated as it sounds really. All this does is track people back to their Facebook profile. So the next thing is custom audience. And this is exactly how it sounds. It's a, you can upload your email list into Facebook and target people that are on your email list. So if they use that same Facebook, that same email in Facebook, it links their profiles together. And now you're targeting those people on Facebook. You can target your website visitors. You can target people that watch 50% of your video. You can set up lookalike audiences so you can upload your email list and say, Facebook, I want the 1% of people that are most similar to the people already on my email list. And it has so much data that it can compile that list and create that audience for you. So that'd be a lookalike audience. So we're going to go in a little bit more detail, but um, let me show you a demonstration of what this looks like. So for example, for a custom audience, let's say you have an e-commerce store and they view your sales page of your product. They even were about to buy. Let's say they even put in their information to buy, but they didn't end up purchasing. They added added it to cart, but they didn't purchase. You can specifically target people that added to cart, but did not purchase the product. That's how specific you can get. So you can see which part of the process they were in and target the people specifically in that process. And even in your ad, you could say, hey, I saw you added this product to cart, but you didn't purchase, et cetera, et cetera, to hook them in and and basically answer their objections in the advertisement as to why they didn't purchase and potentially get them back to the purchase page to finish their purchase. Let me show you what a custom audience looks like when you make one. So we're gonna go here in our ads manager, we're gonna go to all tools, click this button top left, all tools and audiences. You can also create your audience inside of this part as well. There'll be a little button that create new, but I'll do it in here for now. Um, just to show you different ways of doing it. So you can create a new audience. So as you can see here, custom audience, look like audience. So we're gonna start with custom audience and look at all these different options you can do. You can upload your customer file. This means your email list. You can put addresses in here. It's insane guys. People, Facebook knows where you live, everything. You can upload website traffic so you can connect your Facebook pixel. 
people that have visited certain pages on your website, people that have purchased stuff on your website, people that became leads on your website, all this kind of stuff. So custom audience, app activity. So this is if you have an app, most people probably don't. Offline activity, this is a little bit more, um, I have not personally used this before, so I'm not exactly sure how this works, but this is very, very rare that people use this, but it's still possible. Engagement is one that I use pretty often. So you can, for example, target people that watched certain videos on your Facebook page. You can target people that, I was talking about our lead form. You can target people that clicked on the lead form, but didn't put in their info, or you can target people that did put in their info, target people that interacted with your Facebook page, target people that interacted with your Instagram page, target people that interacted with your event. There's so many options. It's insane. And that's why the, that's what makes this so powerful. In any of those custom audiences, you can create a lookalike audience off of. So as you can see, I'll just type in United States. We create an audience of the 1% of people that are most similar to the people already on our source. It's, it's crazy. So you can get customers that are most similar to the customers you already have and let Facebook do the work for you. That's one way you can do your targeting. It's just crazy, guys. So... Pixel, that's what we're going to jump into next. And I think I have it here. Well, lookalike audience, I have that first. But um, so basically, lookalike audiences take an audience you already have and finds people similar to them for you. So you already have to have a minimum audience of 100 to create this. And obviously, the more people you have, the better, because that's the more data that Facebook can go off of. So I already showed you what that looks like. So as far as a Facebook pixel, it's way more simpler. It's way simpler than it sounds. So... This actually does not need a hundred audience. I don't know why they have that there, but um, like I said, it's a piece of code that you put on your website, which allows you to track visitors and connects them back to your website. So a demonstration, let me show you what that looks like. So we go into here, click this three bars, go to pixels, and you guys want to create. If you have multiple businesses, the way I people sometimes ask me, what should I use different pixels, stuff like that. Use one pixel per business that you have. So if you only have one business, you only need one pixel. But if you have multiple businesses, you'll want to use a different pixel for each business. Um, so let me show you. Okay, so let's say we want to put, we already made our pixel and it's going to show up something like this. Now we want to set up our pixel and we go to here. Now if you have one of these websites, you can just use this one. If you, most people, it's going to, it's going to, you're going to choose this step though. And you're gonna get this. So for example, if we're using ClickFunnels, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna to go to ClickFunnels. All you have to do is copy this code right here. Copy, click it, and it copies for you. Next, you're going to go to your page. So let's go to one of my pages. And if we're in ClickFunnels, we're gonna to go to the settings. Now, guys, you can look up Facebook Pixel. Whatever your website is, just search in Google. For example, if you have a Squarespace website, if you have a Wix website, if you have a WordPress website, or if you have a web developer, they'll know how to do this most likely. You just search how to install Facebook Pixel. See, so look at all these things that show up. All you have to do is click one of these videos and it'll give you a tutorial. So I'm just showing you an example. So as you can see, you just paste it in here for ClickFunnels and this will track people that visit your website. Now, if you wanna track a lead, I'm just showing you guys real quickly. So next, we got that part done. This part you want on every page of your website. So when you put this on your whole website, and then the next part, um, we have to create a custom event if we're doing if we're capturing leads. So you just choose whatever one that fits this best. So we generate where we want to capture leads. So um, how do we know when somebody became a lead? Well, if they get to the thank you page, then obviously they had to have put in their information to get there. So we put this piece of code on the thank you page. So when somebody hits the thank you page, this piece of code fires and it tells Facebook this person has became a lead. And that's how it all works. So if you need to go more in depth on this, I can't, I don't want to explain this super in depth in this video. Um, if you want to install, it, it's really, it's like a lot easier than it sounds, like I said, but where would I install this? So a thank you page. I'm going to put this on the thank you page and click funnels. This is just going to show you a quick example. And I'm opening up this page and going to tracking code and just pasting it right here. Boom, track the lead. There it's all done. And you just click save and it's all good, good to go. And that's how simple it is. So we'll jump back and go back to the next part that we are in. Um, so real quick, I said I talked about the Facebook Ads Manager a little bit, but what really is it? The Facebook Ads Manager is your ad. This this comes directly from Facebook, guys. By the way, your Ads Manager is a ad campaign command center. Ads Manager is the starting point for running ads on Facebook, Instagram, or audience network. It's your all-in-one tool for creating ads. 
managing and when and where they'll run and tracking how well your campaigns are performing. Facebook Ads Manager is a powerful out ad, ad, ad management tool, but it's designed for advertisers of ev- every experience level. Uh, with the ads and the, the Ads Manager mobile app, you can keep an eye on your campaigns and make changes from anywhere. So this is the layout. So you have a campaign and this is your objective. So it's what you're going for. Whether you're going for traffic, you're going to get people to engage on your post, you're trying to get leads. That's what you choose here. And I'm going to walk you guys through this here in a second. So don't worry if it's a little bit confusing. And you, after your campaign, you have your ad set. And these are basically the settings of your ad. So you're targeting how often you want people to see your ad, et cetera, et cetera. And then lastly, you have your ad. And this is all inside of the campaign. So your ad set is inside of your campaign. Your ad is inside of your ad set. They are all like within each other. And you'll see what that looks like here in a second too. It'll make sense as we show real life examples of this, but and then lastly, your ad is your creative, what the caption says, what the image says, or the video. So let's walk you guys through, give you guys an introduction to the Facebook ads manager. Click on one of my ads, my ads manager. So welcome to the ads manager. This is what it looks like. And as you can see, I have all the data here. I have my ads running. So this is a campaign. So as you can see, what I just showed you, campaigns, ad sets, ads. You click on the campaign and you get all the ad sets inside of this specific campaign. And then from there, you click on one of the ad sets and you get all of the ads inside of an ad set. So let me show you guys something real quickly that will. So if you're wanting to run multiple ad sets inside of a campaign, this is the way you want to run it. You want to run, you want to duplicate by ad set. And this will make sense in a second. I know it sounds, it might sound confusing, but we'll get to it. Let me give you a quick outline of what all this looks like. So I'll give you an outline of what all is included within this. So you got audience insights, um, campaign planner. I don't really mess with that. Creative, creative hub. I don't mess with that, but you guys can explore these on your own, but I'll just go over the main ones for you. That mean the most business manager. I'm going to go over here in just a second page post. We're going to open that app dashboard. Um, these are if you're running ads for average apps, but that's pretty rare. So I'm not going to go over that automated rules. I don't really use that either. You can check it out if you want, but as you can see here, Everything that you click on Facebook and the ads manager shows an information. So you see it right here, everything you hover over has an information, like literally everything in this. So if you guys are confused whatsoever, all you have to do is look at these little information icons and it'll tell you and explain. Facebook does a very good job of making their ads manager easy to understand and use. A lot better than Google and some other platforms. Um, ads reporting, I don't really mess with this too much. Analytics, I'll occasionally mess with, but it's pretty rare. You guys can play with these other ones. I'm just going to show you the main ones that I mess with. Pixels, I already showed you how to do that. I don't really mess with these too often. Um, audiences, images, catalogs. Catalogs I have used quite rarely. That's more complicated, so I'm not going to go over that. Videos, that's where your videos go once you upload them. You got your settings, your business settings, and your billing. Settings is pretty self-explanatory. You can like add more people to your ad account, stuff like that. But here are the two main ones that are extras up here that would probably be most important to you. So one is this audience insights tool. Now I personally, personally, I don't use this too much. Some people rave about this tool. Personally, I don't use it that much. So it's up to your discretion on whether you decide to use this or not. You can watch a whole separate video on this by other people if you want to, but I just personally don't use it that much because I don't find it hugely beneficial. But for example, what you can do is you can upload your email list here and you'll be able to see exactly your demographics of your email list which pages they like in common. You guys can just play around with this overall. This just gives you more um, information about the audience that you're targeting. And you can just play around with this to figure out targetings. But really, like I said, I don't use it heavily often. I'll use it in, in rare cases if I'm really trying to dive really deep into what an audience looks like. But for most cases, I don't think it's 100% necessary. But it's definitely helpful if you decide to do it. It's just more time consuming, I think. But um, so let's go into one of my ad accounts. Let's do Billy Wilson. And so the reason I'm bringing this up here, this is your page posts. So why this is important, let me show you an example here. So we click on one of my ads. I'm going to go into here. Oh, by the way, I don't know why my all my ads got disapproved. This is just an unusual thing. I'll have to sort that out later. But if you guys decide to run ads and you use multiple split tests, the reason I, I told you about this page post page is because you'll need to visit this page occasionally to copy this ad ID number and enter post ID and put it in here if you want to use the same post. So as you can see here, I have lots of different ads running in here and some of them have different targeting. So for example, this one targets people that are interested in Ty Lopez and social media marketing. 
And this one targets a lookalike audience. So I wanted to compare which one would perform better, but I don't want them to send to different advertisements. If I just duplicate them, they're gonna start, start making newer advertisements and the engagement is not going to stack up. So it's gonna be two, it's, Facebook's gonna put it as two different ones. So if somebody comments on this one, it's not gonna show up on this one, for example. But if I want them to show up and stack together, then you need to use this existing post button after you make the first one and then you just enter the ID and that's where you get the ID from. So that's why I wanted to show you guys this one real quickly because this is something I use a reasonable amount. The next part that we are in is the business manager. So I wanted to show you the what the business manager is and whether or not you should be using this or not. So the business manager, this comes from Facebook once again. The business manager is a free Facebook platform that helps advertisers integrate Facebook marketing efforts across their business with external partners. You'll be able to run and track your ads, manage assets such as pages and ad accounts and add an agency or marketing partners to help you manage your business. Basically the business manager, you're able to put multiple ad accounts in, you're able to have multiple pages in, you're able to have multiple pixels in. So if you have multiple businesses and stuff like that, that's when you want to use the business manager. But um, so who should use the business manager? I'm just going to, you can pause the screen here if you're interested in reading this, but these are the ways that, like, if you have one of these reasons, this is why you should use the business manager. If you don't have any of these things, you don't necessarily have to make one yet. But that's just the decision you'll have to make based on what your situation is. So I'll do a quick walkthrough of the business manager. It's going to be really fast. So if you're not, if you're not going to create a business manager, then you can skip this part real quickly. But I'm just going to walk through it real fast. This is what the business manager looks like when you log in. You have all, all your ad accounts, all your pages, and you can go to your business settings to manage all of those accounts. So for me, I run an agency, so obviously I have all my clients to run ads for. You can add users in here. So if you have multiple people that are running ads under your business, or you have like employees and stuff like that, you can add them under here. You can add other business partners. You can add pages under here. This is obviously, I mean, you can just scroll through all these things. You can have multiple pixels. It's just good if you have multiple of a lot of different things. And there's, a, and there's also like a couple extra features that business manager get, but not that many really. And most likely most of you guys won't need to use it, but um, the business manager still can be beneficial for a lot of you. So this is just a quick outline of it. Um, I'm not gonna go super in depth, like I said, but this is just a quick walkthrough. And obviously you, got, you can go through all the settings here once again, but these are the same. Um, the only thing that's different is really the business settings and you can scroll through all of these. As you can see, you can access all the pixels at one place. You can give certain people access to certain ad accounts. If you have employees, um, you can request ad accounts and all kind of types of different stuff like that. So next part that we wanted to jump into was what you'll want before creating your first ad. Just to give you a quick summary of what you need before you create, start creating your ad. You need a Facebook page. You need a Facebook ads manager created. So you just search Facebook ads manager and just click, go to the ads manager. Uh, you want to have your pixel installed to your website or your landing page. Um, if you're using a lead form, obviously you don't need to do that. And you want to come up with your offer, your ad copy, creative, etc. What we already created and what I, what I walked you through creating already. So I usually create my stuff first before putting in the ads manager because you might lose your ad or you might like accidentally not save it or something like that. You don't want that to happen. So I usually keep it in multiple places. Um, I usually make mine on Google Drive and I just write my ad copy on here and use a Google document, write my ad copy, and then I copy and paste it into the ads manager when I'm creating my ad. That's just the way that I personally do it. You guys can do it whatever way is easiest for you. But let's create our first ad together. Let's just walk through the actual, actual process. We finally made it <laughs> to creating the ad. Let's jump right into it. So here's what it looks like to create an ad. So we're going to press create and... So these are the objective. Which one are you gonna choose? So I'll tell you guys real quickly what the most common ones are that people are gonna end up using. Traffic, engagement, video views, lead generation, messages, conversions are gonna be the most common ones that people are gonna use. These other ones are extremely rare that I'd use. Um, so I'm not gonna cover them. And you can read the little info thing, but just so few people are gonna use the other ones that I, there's no reason for me to talk about them. Traffic, I usually don't actually recommend people do this one, except in rare cases when you can't put a pixel to track. Because in reality, nobody truly wants to just send people to, I mean, people might just want to send people to their website, but I wouldn't really recommend that. Like I said from the very beginning, I'd more so recommend conversions <clears throat> or lead generation for most people. If you're in local business, conversions and lead gen is going to be the most powerful. Video views is if you're just trying to get more videos, 
views. I mean, obviously, and if you're doing engagement, you're trying to gain some social proof on your advertisements. This is just a little bit more complicated stuff. Now, I usually just, Facebook has become better over time. Now, in the past, you may have seen videos that t pe people show you like, create one engagement version of your campaign, create one lead gen uh, conversion version and test them against each other. Yes, you guys can do that. But for the most part, I've noticed Facebook has gotten a lot better at optimizing. Like for example, if you're trying to gather leads, usually your best bet is conversion or lead gen, depending on if you're using a landing page or a lead form. So it's really not like a huge, I usually would go with whatever one is actually your goal. Um, so there's, there's a lot more complicated behind it, but obviously if you're choosing traffic, Facebook is going to, whatever one of these things that you choose, Facebook is going to optimize for getting more of these things. Messages is usually for like messenger bots or getting people to send messages. So what Facebook does, if you choose whatever one of these is Facebook will go and target the people that are most likely to send a message, people that are most likely to send a conversion, um, people that are most likely to engage, people that are most likely to click on stuff. So that's what the purpose of the um, these are four. So reach and frequency. I haven't actually looked at this in a while, but it's interesting. So in this case, we're going to choose lead generation, but, um, conversion works with a landing page. Um, engagement is working. If you're trying to get engagement messages, obviously you're trying to get people to message you. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory for the most part. So here's our campaign name. Now you can create a split test here, but I usually don't do it this way because there's some downsides to it. It's just a little bit more confusing overall. So I usually don't recommend people do this. I'll show you how to split test in a second. That's a little bit, I think is a better method right at this moment of recording this video. So we continue and got, by the way, guys, this is the way you can tell between a Facebook ads expert and somebody that's just BSing their way through this. If you know, this is the way, to, this is how I personally can tell the difference between someone that's ran a lot of Facebook ads and who hasn't and who's an expert and who's not. The way they name their campaigns, that's really interesting because if you if you don't name your campaigns in a way that makes sense, you're gonna get so confused once you run a lot of them. <laughs> so if it, as you guys can imagine, if I go into my ad account here and I don't name my ad campaigns correctly and I just go into one campaign, for example, um, generate, generating leads for a webinar that I ran, then as you can see, I named them specifically, but if they're just, if you just put the automatic names in here, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between any of them. And I have to edit every single one, look inside, see what it does. So I name them so I can tell really quickly which ones are performing better. So the way I name my campaigns is I'll do the objective first. So I lead gen, and then I do the audience that I'm targeting. So let's say in this case, we're going to target fitness interests. And this might be like, for example, you might put email look like here, something like that. And we're going to, well, this is just a campaign. So we're going to do a lead gen and what our overall, what our offer is usually is what I do for the campaign name. So seven day free pass. So that's going to, that's what I'm going to name my campaign continue. And I usually name my campaign from here. So this one is where you put the audience so you can tell the difference between the ad sets. So the audience would be, in this case, we're going to do fitness interests and seven day free pass. And so whatever thing you are split testing, you're going to want to write in here so you can tell the difference between your ads. So you can add more dashes or less dashes depending on how many different things you're going to test. We are going to create an audience real quick. So we can put our email list in here and use our look like as for example. But in this case, we're going to do like a specific city. So I'm going to type in, you probably want to put in, if you're a local business, you're going to want to put in your address. Or if you're an e-commerce store, you're going to want to put in your whatever countries you want to target specifically. It's all up to you. This is where you get to make the decision and you already wrote down who your target audience was. So all you have to do at this point is plug in what kind of information you put in here. So we're looking for people that already work out. Um, and we're looking at people age 18 to 55. And let's say we're mo like whatever your ideal customer is. Maybe it's more, more men, more women. I'll just go all for now. But um, we're looking for people, people that are already interested in fitness. So we're going to type in fitness and fit, physical fitness. And we're also going to do this. We're going to press this button that says narrow audience. And we are going to say people will have to be interested in physical fitness. And let's do another fitness interest. And they have to be interested in, let's say, bodybuilding. So now well, I'm just going to type in my city since I don't want to put a specific address for this, by the way. And you can change the radius um, depending on how far you think. If you're a local business, depending on how far you think people are willing to drive to get to you. 
And so as you can see, people have to be interested to, for them to be targeted by this ad, they have to be both interested in physical fitness and bodybuilding. So it's a double interest So we know these people are pretty much guaranteed to be interested in fitness. Now, if we were to just do one of these, you can see the interest will go, uh, the level will go up. But obviously the downside is some people might have just, it might have just been somebody who's trying to lose weight lately and they're not necessarily highly in, in, into the fitness industry. So that's just one example. But um, let's say that's just one example. We're going to, we, we could save that audience from there. So we could save this audience and write fitness interest. You could say like um, fitness double interests and they could do like bodybuilding plus whatever the other one was called uh, I can't remember what it was it was like physical fitness yeah you could just do that but another one so gym member gym and, gym and fitness clubs so we're going to exit out of this all right so this one's actually they're actually getting they're actually removing this one so that's interesting to see but you used to be able to target people that already have because Facebook even bought credit the card the data from credit card companies so it could tell what people had gym memberships but obviously they're removing that one so we can't use that anymore but you guys can use lookalikes you can just tar try straight up broad targeting you could just do people aged in this range and and to see if that works better like there's nothing better you can do than just test because you won't know until you test it so if I was just targeting people only age broad Let's say 18 to 55. That's it. That's what I would write for my audience or a lookalike email or customer lookalike. You have your customer database. There you go. That's just a couple examples. So from here, I wouldn't really recommend checking this box for the most part. Obviously, you can read here, but I usually don't check this box. It's rare cases that I do. This is something you'll want to look into here. Um, some people recommend to edit placements, but if you're a beginner, I mean, you can probably just go with the automatic placements and Facebook's going to dust die for you anyway. But as, as you get more advanced, you can use edit placements. And I use edit placements very, like pretty often. Most of the time I'll make a separate ad for Facebook and Instagram because Instagram people, for example, can't click links. So if you put a link in the, in the Instagram caption, people can't click it and they get confused. So usually I make a separate ad for Facebook and Instagram. And by the way, if you don't test between them without doing it separately, Facebook will automatically choose one that's gonna, so like for example, it might spend $5 and just start running all your ads to Facebook because in the $5 it performed better, but it might've just been randomized that it randomly performed better. You don't know for sure. So that's why I usually create separate ads for Facebook and Instagram. So we'll just choose, we're gonna only run this ad on Facebook for now. So, um, and by the way, like Facebook feed is usually the most common one people will do and what commonly performs the best, but you guys can take more and take more time to look into information on these. These are just different places that they show up. And like, as you can see, each one shows you an example of what it looks like. Um, so connected to Wi-Fi, you can do specific mobile, mobile devices. I usually don't do these. If you're wanting to do some people for e-commerce recommend connected to Wi-Fi because people are more likely to sit, be sitting down in their home and stuff like that. But um, that's just an idea. Budget, obviously that's where you set the budget. Pretty simple, you can set a start and end date if you need to. Bid strategy, I usually don't mess with this stuff. This is just a really complicated stuff. I don't even, I personally never use this because usually Facebook does a better job than you personally, than you can because it has so much learning behind it that you couldn't even match it. And at this point, this is when we're gonna create our ad. So we're going to put a video since we're going to, we want to do a video in this case. I'm not going to put a video because we're just showing this for example purposes, but let's uh, copy and paste this ad copy here. So we wrote our ad copy out and we put it in here. You can use, and obviously it's not going to show up because we don't have a video. So let's just change the image for now so you guys can see what it looks like. We'll just put this random image that already popped up in here, but headline. So we got our headline and this is just things that you guys will have to personally write and just take your time with this. Like, it's something that takes a lot of time and you're just going to have to be patient with it and take the time to work on this, take the time to write it out and make it effective. 
make it fit your business. As you can tell in this video, we showed you a couple examples. You can do research about your industry and see what kind of ads people are running. Just search in, in Google, Facebook ads for real estate, this blah, 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 blah. But keep in mind, if you're searching for stuff on Google, you got to keep in mind most of the ads that you're going to see aren't going to actually be that good, even though they might seem good. Because most of the time, people don't post ads that are really good on, face, on um, the internet that often. So that's just an example. But um, as you can see, my emojis went away. So if you guys want emojis, you can install like a Chrome extension or just search like whatever emoji, like right arrow emoji. But my my ad copy is supposed to look like this, but the emojis didn't carry over. So I'd have to retype them in, but I'm not going to do that now. And also I'm missing like the, um, the enters. So you want to make it easier to read, blah, blah, blah. But you guys get the idea for writing the ad copy. I went that over with you. If you want to get... Like templates on this, you can search online. Um, but I kind of gave you the template already for the most part. We usually write, I mean, I walked you through how to create the ad copy, so you already got a little bit of an idea. Um, there's lots of different ways. It can, doesn't have to be this long. It can be shorter. It can be like this long. It can be even longer than this. I've written all kinds of stuff. The main thing you have to do is just test and practice, guys. That's all you really need to do. That's how you get good at this. Look at real life examples, search on Google, see what kind of ads people are running. Um, get feedback in Facebook groups, and I have a Facebook group, I'll tell you, but you can change the call to action here. Um, the news feed link description shows up under here, and obviously, so one thing I want to mention, you'll always want to, I typically always preview my ads on mobile before I actually run them, so I, I preview my ad because even though it shows like this up on here, where the see more button is, if you're trying to make like, for example, I talked about having the call to action above the see more button, you need to check it and send a notification to Facebook and it'll pop up on your phone and you can look at the ad on your phone and check it on there because this isn't actually 100% accurate. What you see on your phone is more accurate and you can see what it looks like on a desktop, everything. So this is how you preview your ad um, and you can share it with other people once you publish it. But just not all the options are there right now because it's not published yet. And as you can see, you don't really need any of this info, but this you will want to have on for most of your ads. So I would suggest turning this on for lead gen ads. You don't really necessarily have to have it on, but usually you want to turn this on and choose whatever pixel that it matches up to. And from the next part, if you're doing a lead form, this is the Facebook built-in landing page, which is probably the easiest way for you to set up your ads if you're just a beginner, um, rather than going through the process of setting up a landing page, because that's a whole other skill set. So we're going to start doing a new form. And you guys, you can see here, you usually want to go in here and set the settings to open. I don't know why they have this setting automatically, but do that. And we're going to get rid of this intro. You can have an intro. You can put like bullet points here, um, some benefits that they're getting. It's up to you. I usually just keep it really simple and just put what I'm doing. And I and I want their, I want their name, email, and phone. I click those options. You can put in whatever, whatever options you want. And then I say... Um, reserve your seven day free pass and that's it and they pretty much press submit that's what's gonna so this is gonna pop up whenever they click on your ad even if they have the if they click on the video your <laughs> Facebook actually plays your video above this section same thing if you have a landing page if you, somebody clicks on your video this actually pops up below the video so it's kind of cool how it works but um, you have to have a privacy policy to create this so there's links, uh, if you don't have a privacy policy, you have to put this on a website or on a ClickFunnels page, just something and put a link here. They just require you to have a privacy policy. You can just copy and paste the privacy policy off the internet. And just replace the words with your own business name. And this is where you'd put like the upsell. It'd be like, thanks, but wait. Call now and you'll call now to schedule a tour and you'll also receive so the reason we're doing an upsell here and getting them to schedule a tour on their own is so we have to do less work following up with them because if they schedule a tour and call on their own it's gonna be easier on us you'll also receive a free body composition test or something whatever you want to call it and then you can change whatever this button says call so we're going to want to change this to call now call now put your phone number 
Simple as that. Finish, change the name of the lead form. Boom, you're good to go. That's how you set it all up. And that's how you create a Facebook ad from complete scratch. Now, let me change the objective real quickly to conversion to show you the difference because there are different options in each. So I just want to walk you through one more example. I'm not going to go, it's not going to go completely. I'm just going to show you the stuff that's different. But um, if you're going for conversion, you have to have a lead set up just like I showed you up. You have to have your pixel set up if you decide to use conversion, which I highly recommend. Like you should be using, this is if you use a landing page or you're selling something on an e-commerce website. You want to optimize for now e-commerce like I could go into a whole another story. Obviously, there's so many more things I can go into. It's so difficult to go into everything that's possible with Facebook ads. It's insane. It takes like months of time to get become an expert. But um, I'm doing my best to do this as fast as possible. Like you're still basically an expert after watching this. You're going to know more than 99 percent of people that are, tr are running Facebook ads right now just by watching this video alone. Trust me. You'd be surprised at what kind of Facebook ads people will run and how many mistakes people make. It's it's insane. So obviously you want to name your campaigns. I'm going to skip over that though. So we, we, let's say we want to go go for leads. Now there's some tricks to this to e-commerce that I'm not going to talk about, but we're let's say we're going to go for leads. Facebook is going to optimize for people that are going to become leads. We do our it's, everything in the targeting is the same, so I'm not going to skip that. Now this part I always change the one day click if we're doing conversion, and I continue. So that's the only differences so far. Those two differences, and as you'll notice in in uh, lead generation campaigns, you can't use the existing posts. Unfortunately, they don't have that feature yet. So you can you can do this in conversions. So you could that's where you can plug in that URL I showed you how to get. Um, but here's how you create everything. Everything's the exact same so far. You have the image. Um, there's slightly different options as far as the calls to action and stuff like that. But obviously, you want to make sure this pixel is on. That's one of the most important things. I think by conversion, yeah, you can even select the option in conversion. So that's how you set up conversion ad. That's the slight differences. There's going to be slight differences in all of these, but I'm not going to go all through all of them today. You can check them out on your own, but those are the most two common ones that I use. So that's why I figured I'd go over those. So that covers this section of this video. The next part is how to split test. Now we're almost to the end guys, we're finally almost to the end. This is like the really advanced stuff now, but here's how you split test. So this is the correct way to split test. Like I said, you wanna split test at the ad set level is where you're gonna duplicate your stuff. Now I could go explain exactly why you split test the ad set level, but um, the reason you don't split test at the ad level is because Facebook will automatically choose within like the first $5 which of these ads it's going to send most of the traffic to. And it's not going to do a proper split test. And you're not going to properly be able to tell which one actually performs because Facebook's choosing the data off such a small set of data that it's not going to make sense. That it's not going to accurately choose which one's actually better. So you split test the ad set level. How do you do that? What does that look like? So you click on... So once you've created your ad, it's going to show up in here. After you click, cr click the pub publish button, it's going to show up in here. And there's going to be one of the ads show up here, and you're going to press this duplicate button once you're in the ad set sec section. And then you're going to do original campaign most of the time unless you want one of the other options. And from here, it's going to pop up the screen. And we're going to want to change the name to whatever we're making different on this one to see like if we're testing between what audience works better this time, then we're gonna test the audience and we are going to put the different audience in here and then we're gonna publish it. And you're probably gonna wanna change the ad set, the ad name too, so you can tell the difference there in case you check the data here later. But um, that's how you split test, it's that simple. All you do is duplicate and you change whatever you need to change, change the name so you can tell the difference. That's it. Um, so here's an example of what you should split test in case you're wondering. You should split test or things that you can split test. Now, it's going to be up to your personal discretion which one of these you think is most important to split test. I'll tell you right now, the most common ones that I split test are the targeting. And um, number one is targeting, definitely. And probably not really the offer. Targeting is the number one for me by far. But for you guys as beginners, you're probably going to want to test like as many of these as possible. The more rigorous you can test, the more you're going to learn and the more you're going to figure out. So after doing this for a couple months on your business, you're going to really start to figure out and narrow down. Like you guys can only imagine after so many split tests and variations of your ads, you're going to really start to narrow down what's working for your business and really be able to get the cost per lead as low as possible. 
So here's how you plan out a proper split test. So I usually, if you want to plan out a really proper one, you want to go fancy on this and do a really in-depth split testing. I usually, now I don't do this that often because I, I have experience with this. I can just do it off the cuff. But if you guys are like newer to this, this is how I'd set up your split testing. So you decide what factors you want to test between. Let's say you want to test the offer, you want to test the creative, and you want to test different targetings. Then from there, I built this out in an Excel spreadsheet. You can add more of these columns if you want or less columns depending on how many different things you want to test between. And I basically put the names of all the stuff that I want. So this is just an example of one of my clients that I built this out for. We have like retargeting campaigns that we have different creatives for, different offers for, different targeting for. It's all kinds of stuff. So you guys can pause the screen here and take a look at what this looks like. But that's just a quick o overview if you want to set this up. And then from there, after you've made this Excel sheet, you'll be able to understand better when you're creating your campaigns, what exactly you're trying to accomplish. So how do you choose a winning ad and scale? Or AKA, how do you read the data that you're actually getting? Because obviously that's important. We're going to go over this first and then we're going to hit the last part. How do you read the data? How do you tell if your ad is performing good? Obviously, you know if your ad is performing good by how much you're paying per lead, which you already have, should have figured out by which I showed you. But um, so how do we read the data? Obviously, in this case, what I care most about is our cost per lead. So I'm getting people signed up for a webinar um, and that basically sells them a program at the end. So I'm going to want to look at my most two most important things are probably going to be the leads. And then after the webinar is done, I can actually like this is how crazy Facebook is. If you set everything up correctly, I can even see which ad people bought my product from after the webinar. It's insane. So check this out. I can see which people purchased, which ads people came from. So as you can tell, most people that, that bought were people that already knew about me which makes sense, right? Because they're more likely to do it. But there was two or three, there's two or three people that, well, two people that bought that didn't even know about me. I don't know that for 100% sure, but um, since they were in the, the other audiences, they may not have known about me already and they still bought. So that's how I can see even what ad these came from. But um, usually, depending on what your objective is, your cost per lead is gonna be the most important. So that's the one thing you're gonna look at. Uh, the most common things, just so you know that this is the number one thing. So obviously, if this cost per lead is lower than this one, I know this audience performed better than this one. That's usually the best bet. But obviously, if it's too soon to tell, it could be randomness that making that's making the difference. So you need to make sure that you spent a decent amount of money before you decide which one's actually performing better so that one's just not better by complete random chance. So and guys, by the way, if you're if you're wondering how much money should I spend before I turn my ad off? I usually recommend figure out how much you're willing to pay per lead. Let's say it's $10. I would usually spend three times that to see if my ad is working in case it's just a bad, um, in case they need time to optimize or it's just bad luck. So if my, if my goal is to get a $10 lead, I'm going to spend $30 to see if my ad works or not. And another way you can do this is, if I'm going for a $10 lead, it's obviously some people are going to click my ad. They are, so you don't have to necessarily spend $30, but I'm going to see that some, if, if I spend $10 and nobody clicked my ad, I'm probably going to still turn it off because that means people aren't even interested at all. So you can break it down even further if you want to spend less and save more money that way. But that's just some ideas. Uh, most common things that I look at is link clicks and cost per link click. So I'm going to pull up cost per link click because that's something that I most commonly use. Just like I was talking about before, Facebook shows you information on everything. So if you have any questions about stuff, I'm not going to go over every single thing because it just takes so long. But um, as you can see, some of these got cheaper link, link clicks than others and some got lower cost per leads than others. But the thing that I care about most in this case is the cost per lead. So that's the number one thing that I'm going to care about. And that's cost per lead is going to be the number one thing you buy. Most of you guys are going to want to look at as well. That's the biggest thing that I use to compare. One more thing that I look at occasionally is relevance score and you can only see this in the ad level so i'm going to unclick this and uh, relevance score basically means as you can see here a rating from one to ten that estimates how well your target audience is just responding to your ad so what this means is if you have a bad one let's say it's like one or two then you have one of two problems either your ad is not engaging at all or your audience is not resonating with your ad your targeting is bad so it's one of those two problems um, 
so yeah, that's how pretty much how you analyze the data of your ads. That's just a quick way of doing it in the most important ways. So let me real quickly show you how to set up retargeting ads because this is extremely powerful. And let me show you my little system that I implement for all of my businesses that I work with. So this is like my signature funnel. And this is one of the most powerful things I've ever set up in my life. And don't let this confuse you. It'll make more sense. But let's say we're split testing between two different ads. You can have more than this. This is just a visual representation. And we're sending them, let's say we're doing that seven day offer and we're testing between two different audience, so we, audiences. So we have this ad one, and this ad two, or we use a different video for one of these, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. You're going to be different in any way. From there, we send people to the lead form to opt in for the seven day free pass. And then from there, if they do it, they get sent to a thank you page. Well, what happens if they don't do it? If they don't do it, or even if they do do it, we can still send people to this process. If they, if they obviously showed some, some level of interest in our um, business, like they watched the video or they visited the landing page, because we, as I showed you, you can target those people through custom targeting and custom audiences. We can therefore retarget these people with multiple advertisements. So they've shown some level of interest, but maybe they're just not quite sold yet on this, on this gym. What are we going to do? We're going to show, we're going to have more ads. Maybe let's, maybe we're going to record three more videos. And one of these videos is going to be member testimonials. One of these videos is going to be giving a tour of the gym. One of these videos is going to be as far as just like some kind of bodybuilding tip people would want to hear about or something like that. Now we're building a rapport automatically with these people that have already shown interest. And we're going to send them back to this lead form every single time. So as you can tell, this is a really powerful process because we're building rapport automatically with these people by making them see our ads every single day, not every single day per se, but making them see our ads multiple times because not everybody or even a majority of people aren't going to put in their information the first time because maybe they don't know you yet. They don't feel comfortable with you yet, but what these ads are going to allow you to do is get them to feel comfortable with you. And that's why retargeting is so powerful. And this is one of the most important things you can set up. So this is going to take like one second to show you guys, but how do you set up a retargeting ad? Usually I do a campaign like this and let's say we're doing the lead gen again and I'm going to do lead gen retargeting is our objective. Retargeting seven day pass. All right. So really the only thing we're going to do is that's going to be different is we're going to put in a custom audience here and we're going to obviously put a, make a different ad make a new one that's different. You don't want it to be the same ad, just going to the same people and over and over again because they're just going to skip past it. It's been the same thing they've already seen 10 times. You're going to do custom audience and you're going to choose, you can put multiple in here even. You can, you're going to, let me uh, just choose one after I've already, that I've already made. I'm going to maybe do people that were, that visited my sales page, people that um, are on my email list, people that are, people that watch my videos, anything that you want, you can put in here. And now I'm going to run ads to all these people that are already familiar with my business and have already seen my business before. That's why this is really powerful. And you can turn, this is how you can really turn a cold lead into a warm one automatically without you, with the Facebook ad doing the work 24 seven while you're not doing anything. You just record a video or you made an ad and you have a set up system that works. So guys, this is nearly the end of the video. So after you implement this and you test them, if your ads don't work, I want you to watch this video. My, one of my videos that I made in the past on how to fix your Facebook ads. It's called like how to create Facebook ads that work in 2018. I'll probably put a link up here in the top, right? So if you have problems with your ads, that will tell you how to diagnose exactly what's wrong with your ad. So at this point, we're pretty much done. And I just want to show you guys what like your next best bet is doing. So most likely you're one of the following. If you watch the way through this video, you're either a business owner, you're a social media marketer, you're affiliate marketer, you're an e-com store owner, or you're an influencer selling info products. If you are one of these, what should you do next? I have a couple different offers for you guys in case they would benefit you. Like I want you to know right now, the point of this video is not the purpose of this video is not to sell you. Hopefully I provided with provided you with an immense amount of value. One of the major reasons I made this is obviously I, I'm going to make it for the money. But be, other than that, like this is something that I had wish I had had when I first started with Facebook ads. So that's why I, another reason why I'm making this and why I think it'll be beneficial to you guys. But if you're a business owner and, and you've gotten to this point and you're wondering, 
if you would, you would rather just save yourself the time at this point and have an expert who's already spent hundreds of thousands of dollars do this for you and do it right from the beginning, I'm going to have a link in the description where you can book an appointment with me and have it like fill out a little application. We can book an appointment together and see if it'll be a good fit. But I want to give a disclaimer, like don't make an appointment if you like, I just want to make sure, make it clear that this is not going to be something that cheap. It's going to be fairly, not really expensive. Like it's an investment, but it's going to run you anywhere from $1,500 to $10,000 plus, depending on the expected process and scope of work involved. But uh, I'm not, I want you to know I'm not going to take you on if I'm not 100% sure I can provide you with a great return because I don't even have time to work with every business. I only have work, time to work with the ones that um, are going to be easiest for me to bring results for. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you are interested in that and having just somebody that's an expert run the ads for you, somebody that already has experience so you don't have to spend all the time and all the money figuring out on your own. Um, you can apply and schedule for apply and schedule a call to work with me and my team using the link in, link in the description. And this video still would have benefited you because you'll be able to then understand more about what we do. Or um, and we can also like work together more improved. But if you decide to do it yourself, that's perfectly fine too. Like I don't mind either way. This is just an offer out there for the people that might benefit or benefit from it. But um, just to give you an idea like please only apply if you're the following things. The reason I ask this is because I don't want to waste your time. Obviously, I don't want to waste my own, but I don't want to waste your time either. So make sure you're a high quality service and you have to have a raving, not just good reviews because it's going to make it way easier to sell on Facebook. You must have a strong ability to close leads. Like it's better if you have sales experience because you're going to be getting leads. It's not going to be like referrals where people just come in the door. Now, some people will once we set up this retargeting system, but it's gonna, you're gonna make a lot more money if you have a strong ability to close leads. And I even have sales scripts and stuff like that too, but I just wanna make that clear. Um, Forward thinking long term entrepreneurs, like just re people that realize that this is gonna be an investment and it's gonna be something that's building for the future. People that are willing to do stuff that's on the cutting edge, but I, I don't, I'm not really worried about that one because I assume if you watch this video on Facebook, guys, you're probably already that kind of person. And growth mindset, people that are actually looking to grow, not, some people want to just rely on for referrals and that's perfectly fine. But obviously if you guys are watching this video too, like this one doesn't really apply. Um, but this is just a quick outline or if you get other people to watch that. But for my social media marketers and the other people that are watching this video, for my social media marketers specifically and you're trying to learn Facebook ads and how to run Facebook ads for businesses, um, I want you to know that one option you have is watching other videos on this channel. Like there's the videos on this channel are extremely valuable. The same goes for business owners out there. And you can put this together and you can uh, get your first client. And honestly, like if you don't learn from somebody, you're probably going to lose thousands because you couldn't provide results. This is, that's exactly what happened to me. I lost um, quite a few clients at the beginning when I failed with Facebook advertising. But I created this program. It's called Facebook Ads Agency Academy. I'm going to put a link to that in the description as well. And like I said, guys, I don't want you to feel sold to. This is only for the people that like want this. So if you don't want to be sold to, you can just skip out of this video. Like there's nobody asking you to stay. But uh, option number two is saving yourself the time and headache and getting your first thousand dollar per month client this month and getting your clients results and get me as your mentor. The reason I made this program is to help the people that I can't tell you guys how rewarding it is. One, if you're a business owner to help a business blow up, just like I did for that gym that I showed you at the beginning and some of my other clients, like nothing feels better than to help a business so much to change their life. Just like it, nothing feels better to me than helping somebody that was my past self trying to become and do social media marketing, helping them succeed. It feels so good to me. And I might as well, since I've already went through all the pain and suffering and the failures, I might as well pass that on to you. So if you're interested in that program at all, I'll have a link down in the description. It's called Six Figure Facebook Ads Agency Academy. And you can get more information on the course sales page there. But I will will I will try, if I have this later on, to put a link to a free training that even goes further on this, that's specifically for social media marketers that you would probably benefit from. So if I have that training, I'll put it in link. If there's not the training link yet, you can come back probably a month later and I'll be there. Just a couple more things that I have for you guys if, if you would benefit from it. If you're in the fitness or the real estate niche, I do have some ads already proven to work for these. And if you would like to just steal my exact ads that are already proven to work that I've done and created after thousands of dollars spent and, and hundreds of hours doing the split tests over and over and over again. Like this is like the hundredth iter iteration of ads that have been proven to work. It's insane. If you'd rather just skip to the end and get my ads that are already proven to work, this is for you. But obviously it is a decent investment if you decide to do this. I'll put a link to this down in the description below. I offer pre-made ad copy targeting and templates that you can quite literally copy and paste to get results with. But I want to make this clear. 
Um, these, well, the next part I'll make clear, but these pre-made ads have been thoroughly tested, tested and proven to work. But I want you to know this is this uh, this program is mainly designed for people who are already understand Facebook ads and have run them previously. This is not for beginners. Now, you might be an expert after this video, and but I would still recommend you run some ads on your own first so you can understand it, and then you can maybe try this program. But uh, you shouldn't get into this program expecting your ads just to work instantly because it so at times like every single it's, things are going to work differently for every area. So you should have a little bit of experience and know how to test between different things. Um, before you necessarily jump into this, but you should have that ability. You might just need a little bit of practice first doing it on your own. And then you can jump into this. I might have like an application link to this or something below to make sure you're qualified to get into it. It does have a money back guarantee if it doesn't provide you results. And also I just want to mention real quick, these ads are exclusive access for every five people that purchase. I raised the price by $250 or more because I don't want them to become overused or washed out like that. That would do an injustice to the people that ever already bought it. So every five people, I raised the price by $250. So like next time, if you, if you look at it today and you look at it another time, I just want to warn you that the price might be higher. So you don't get confused if you look at it again later. And so lastly, for my e-com store owners, affiliate marketers, online entrepreneurs, if you want help, you can watch my other videos and you can leave a comment below this video with your current situation. This applies to anyone. I'll see who I can recommend you to for the best help. I have lots of other online entrepreneurs. Like for example, for affiliate marketers, I personally know people that have done amazing in that industry that you can learn from. Same thing with e-com. I can, I can give you guys the best people to look at. Now, obviously I'm not a super expert in, I, I pretty much know how to do everything, but I'm not, I don't have like tons of results in these um, industries. Now getting mentorship is the best, is the fastest route to success. Obviously you guys should probably already know this and investing in yourself is, I can't tell you guys enough. If you're watching this right now, you probably want to invest in yourself, but I can't tell you how much investing into self. I mean, people, it's kind of funny to me that people will invest into college, not knowing what they're going to get out of it. And there's no guarantee behind it, but people won't invest into online training programs, stuff like that. But you guys, once you, once you actually test it out, maybe test it out with a small thing, but this is not even me trying to sell you, but I want you to know like getting mentorship is the fastest route to success. You might as well learn from other people's mistakes rather than trying to learn all on your own. Like it's just going to be way faster. And I, even though I made a lot of mistakes, I still took programs, by the way, I took programs at the beginning of my journey and that still saved me time. Even myself took programs. So it's not just me being a hypocrite. I want you to know that first. So with, to end this video, I want to give you a little bit of motivation to get, get your Facebook ads going. But I want to ask you, which person are you going to be? Are you going to be person number one, 95% of you who watched this whole video, you felt, you felt smarter, but you're never going to do anything with it. Whether you're not going to take advantage of the things that I've offered you, or more importantly, you're not going to try the Facebook ads and just start getting them done today. You're going to put it off. Or you're going to be person number two, the 5% of you that are actually going to take action on this opportunity you've been given and actually change your life. You're going to do this today. You're going to start, you're going to set up your Facebook ad campaigns today. That's just my little bit of motivation. So take action what you learned in this video. Actually take the time to practice your Facebook ads. Like get in there today and start making them. You've learned everything or at least start writing out that template, um, that sheet that I gave you and fill that out. And tomorrow you can plug that into the Facebook ads manager. So guys, to leave this video off, if this video helped, helped you, um, if you'd like more videos like this in the future, please subscribe and you can turn on the no notifications as well because sometimes you won't see my videos if you don't turn on the not notifications. And I do a lot of amazing Facebook ads videos, as you guys can see, that are like really advanced strategies that I, don't, I haven't seen anyone else share with people online, uh, especially for free, just like I did in this video. So if you want to see more stuff like this, please hit the subscribe. It'll be right below this video. Um, leave a like on this video so that you can rewatch it later if you need to and go to your liked videos. Check out some of my previous videos so you can get the value out of that. Um, join the paid ads into dollars Facebook group. That's a Facebook group I own and you can go in there and you can make your Facebook ads and you can post your uh, uh, screenshot of your ad in there and get the help of hundreds of people and myself. Uh, now it's hard for me to answer everybody's stuff because there's so many in there. But um, you're going to get the help of people that are going to personally review your ads and you can get the like post your ads up in there and you can get um, constructive criticism on how to improve. And that's the one of the best ways you possibly can improve. And then lastly, um, after you've done all of those four, you can decide whether or not paid mentorship is right for you or um, working with my business is right for you or not. So with that said, I hope this video uh, benefited you so much. And even if you don't decide to go with any of my paid programs or anything like that doesn't bother me. 
I'm perfectly fine just giving you help. But um, other than that, hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you guys in the next one. Day.